And hello, 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 everyone. Uh, we are back for another virtual table talk. And today I have with me uh, a young lady by the name of Gail. And this is a young lady that I had the pleasure of meeting when I went to Huntsville. Tell everybody hello, Gail. Hello. And I'm going to let her introduce herself in a minute. So, you know, at the virtual table, we have been talking about relationships, relationships, relationships. So today's topic is called, is called Love is Blind. And we're going to talk about interracial dating, interracial marriages and just interracial couples and the challenges that they have to face um, in this world. Uh, we know that we're in 2020, but we still have obstacles and boundaries that we still have to overcome uh, in regards to interracial marriages and couples. And so we're just going to have a conversation about it today. Uh, if you have any questions uh, as we end this video, please leave it in the comment box. And Gail and I will get back on and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, probably more so her than me can answer the questions. But we are glad to come back and answer any questions that you may have. So Gail, I have to first and foremost say welcome to the virtual table. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and you look so cute. And I just want you to know that I love you dearly. I love you dearly. Uh, I lived through uh, your friendship with my daughter-in-law vicariously. So uh, I feel like I know you and I've met you on several occasions. And mm -hmm. I must tell you, you have one of the sweetest and most meekest and mild spirits that I have ever met. Every time I have met you, it, it hasn't changed. And I told Kayla, I said, she's just the most meek and mild person you ever want to meet. And Kayla was like, yeah, that's Gail. And so oh. welcome to the oh. table. <laughs> I'm so honored to have you at the table with me. Thank you. <laughs> So tell the people a little bit about yourself, Gail. All right. So I'm originally from New Jersey, born and raised, born in Newark, New Jersey. Um, grew up there, went to private school, grown up, and then um, uh, uh, high school, I went to public high school. Um, after I graduated high school, um, I went to Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. And Oakwood. that's where... I <laughs> So after Oakwood, um, I went back home for a year, did my externship to be a dietitian. And then um, on my 23rd birthday, to be exact, I moved back to Alabama and I got married with my husband. Okay. So how long have you been married? It will be five years, August 13th. Okay. Five years. So y'all, I would still consider you all a newly uh, married couple. So y'all are still in the new phase of it all. So uh, your husband's name is Jeremy. I, I love his name because he's named after my firstborn <laughs> born son. I've also had the pleasure of meeting your handsome husband. And he is so, um, my impression of him when I met him is that he's so into you. Oh. That was my impression of him. When he looked at you, it's like, almost like he's just, I don't, I don't know what word to use, in love, in love, <laughs> maybe that's the appropriate term, you know how somebody just like goo goo ga ga over somebody when they first start dating, so five years into the game, he still had that goo goo ga ga look on his face, <laughs> and he seems like a wonderful husband, you have a beautiful son named Noah, and he seems to adore his son, he does, and I have to tell you, you all are a beautiful family, young lady, beautiful family. Thank you. So, I'm quarantine now. If he'll still be in love with me and Google Gaga over me. <laughs> but he probably about ready to put you out. Right. <laughs> so like tell him to join the club because I think Philip is about ready to put me out too because I, I come up with something for him to do every day. I got this long list and every day he has something to do around the house. And so to him, he's not by himself. And so even though you all have a beautiful marriage, I know that there are obstacles that you all still face in 2020. So tell me, what does marriage look like for Gail and Jeremy in 2020? I mean, marriage is still great. We're still in the newlywed phase, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he makes me laugh every single day with all the crazy things he says and uh -huh. jokes. 
Facebook showing me. So it's pretty, it's, it's great so far. Good. What obstacles? Well, let me ask you this. When you decided to marry him five years ago, were there any obstacles that you faced from either your family or his family or your friends and his friends? Well, to be honest, um, um, hold on one second. Can you hit pause? Yes. My son is crying. And so, Gail, I have to ask you, I know you all have a beautiful marriage, but what was it like for family and friends when you all first started dating or when you even decided to get married? Did you face any challenges with his family, his friends, your family, your friends? Not so much with his family that I know of, at least, but mm -hmm. with my family, it was, um, oh, you marry a white person, he going to bring you down to Alabama and you gonna, he going to kill you. You know what the white people be doing, yes. Wow, really? Uh -huh. Bring you to the woods and nobody going to know. Mm -hmm. And then also the, the difference in age. Mm -hmm. So... My husband is 13 years older than me, mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, what is he wanting to do with, you know, you? Uh -huh. And his third wife, so my uh -huh. parents was like, something's wrong with that situation for you. You're his third his wife. Okay. You're, you're going out. Come back close, a little bit closer to the computer. Okay. So let, let's, let's take this one at a time. So let's first deal with your side of the family had an issue. They thought he was going to take you to the woods and beat you. And five years later, you're still alive. You haven't been beaten. But let's deal with that. And we're going to deal with the other two statements that you made. What was your reply to that? Because, okay, how long did y'all date first before y'all got married? We dated for a year and it was long. Okay. So what was your reply when they said that to you? Because is this coming from mom and dad or is this coming from friends and siblings? mom and dad wow it, which makes it tougher because sometimes we don't care about what our siblings say or our friends but we care about what our parents think about our spouse yeah so Gail, what was your reply to that he's not like that at all you know once you get to know him he's real sweet you know he's funny mm -hmm. and he's just a great person like he's uh -huh. smart he knows how to do a lot of things if you tell uh -huh. him something and he don't know how to do it you better believe he going to figure it out. <laughs> so he going to figure it out. Wow. Mm -hmm. And to still have that mindset in 2020. But I have learned something, you know, with our parents and they're older. Some people are stuck in their ways. They're stuck in our mindsets. And there, there have been uh, obstacles that they have had to face in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can't neglect that fact to make them even think of something like going to the backwoods and beating you or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the age difference, mm -hmm. what, what challenges have you faced with the age difference? Me personally, I haven't experienced any challenges uh -huh. as age goes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. None? Okay. Because I know Philip and I, it's an age difference between my husband and I. You say it's 13 years for your husband and it's 10 years for my husband and I. And I think it's just the decade we grew up in. Not only the decade, also the, um, how we were raised. He's country, I'm city. You know, he was born in the 60s. I'm a 70s baby. Uh, so just being from that different generation uh, caused some conflicts for, for, for me, uh, if I'm honest. And even in the beginning of our marriage, he almost want to act like he's my dad. And I, I never forget this. He used to always say, well, I'm older than you, so I know better. And man, when he would say that, Gail, I would just, oh, that would burn me up. And I'm like, just because you older don't mean that you know more. He was like, yes. And that was, that was one of the arguments that we had in the first two years because he felt like, okay, I'm older. I know more. And I'm like, oh, no, you don't. You know, mm -hmm. and I know with time and age, you know, of course, you, you are a little bit wiser, but they don't give you the right mm -hmm. to, or, to feel like you're always right, if that makes sense. Yeah. People like because he was older, whatever he was saying, he was right because I was younger and I didn't know any better. Does that make sense? <laughs> it makes total sense. Jeremy is the same way. He feels uh -huh. like he's more than I do since he, you know, you know, lives some situations or uh -huh. experienced situations. 
-hmm. you know, one instance about <laughs> so <laughs> two years ago, I got my first ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the cop said I was going like 70 miles an hour, no, 60 miles an hour, no, 70 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and the limit was um, 50. Mm -hmm. And then I said, no, I was going 60 on a 60. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to fight it in court. Mm -hmm. And my husband, he was all like, I've had tickets in the past. You ain't never going to win. If you fight it, just pay the ticket and just, you know, be done with it. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, firm on, no, I'm not going to pay this ticket because I actually was not speeding. I actually left the house early to go to mm -hmm. Kayla's house. So <laughs> I because I left that early. Uh -huh. and yeah I wind up just paying the ticket because we got a, into a whole argument about uh -huh. that and, yeah. him, and he knows you know since he's lived this uh -huh. experience he knows more about this and you know yeah. I ain't never been in court with a cop yeah so you have experienced a tad bit of that because I'm older than you I know better um yeah. so you said the third marriage you say this you are the third wife Mm -hmm. And so your family said to you, it must be something wrong. Were there any, was there anything in your mind that said, well, why am I the third wife? What happened in the first two marriages? Because the only common denominator is my husband mm -hmm. or at the time, my boyfriend. So yeah. was there anything in your gut saying, man, he didn't been through two marriages. What is it? Well, I did ask him that, and um, basically, the he told me the first marriage, it was only to piss his parents off because they didn't really like the individual, mm -hmm. but it was never anything serious, so it didn't last long, that marriage. And then the second marriage, um, it was just a lot going on, and she was unfaithful, so mm -hmm. that's what second marriage oh no fault of, yeah no fault of his own if somebody's unfaithful yeah. yeah and so uh we have so much in common gail it's, it's amazing talking to you because we have a, a a lot in common i'm also my husband's third wife <laughs> I <didn't. laughs> yeah so there's an age gap and i'm also the third wife and the last l l yes. let's be clear on that yeah i'm the last mrs cops but um uh, and and I, I had that feedback from others just like you did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're the third wife. Is this going to last? And blah, 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 blah. And you hear all of those voices and all of those opinions. Um, so what other obstacles other than your parents did you face going into this marriage with Jeremy? Because you got the age difference. You got the being, you're going to be the third wife challenge. You got the parents thinking he's going to beat me in the backwoods. So what other challenges did you have to overcome, young lady? Um, if this is a challenge, just living so far away from my parents. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the only one in Alabama. All my mm -hmm. family is either in New Jersey, New York, or Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So wow. just be okay. the only family member here. That so everybody's on the East Coast but you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can say sometimes that's a blessing and sometimes it's not. Because uh, yeah. sometimes they don't give the family time to get in your business, if, that's, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, well, with the family in the business, when I first got married, when I was getting married, my mom told me before I left, mm -hmm. you know, you're about to get married. Don't tell your family member. Don't tell your friends anything about, like, what's going on in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Because if things, you know, are not that great, mm -hmm. You and your spouse, you'll work things out and, you know, move past it. Mm -hmm. But family member and friends, they're not going to move past it. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep holding on to that. And they might mm -hmm. put a divide between, you know, you and your spouse. So yes. I always took that to heart. So I don't tell anything personal uh -huh. to my parents. They don't know nothing about my marriage. I, mm -hmm. you know, even though we, Jeremy and I, we may have our ups and downs, uh -huh. but I make everything sound great to my parents, you know. That way they don't look at him in a negative way. Yes. And I don't know who gave you that advice, but that's some good advice. And it's funny that you said that because I had another young lady on and I asked her what was some of the best marriage advice that someone has ever given her. And her answer was the exact thing that you just said. 
don't allow other people in your marriage. And that's such good advice because like you said, you and your spouse move on and they still thinking about what he did back in 2010. And you're like, what? You know, yeah. I have moved past that, but people don't move past that. And mm -hmm. to me, that's just a trick of the enemy to keep bringing your past up. Uh, because I think the devil always tried to use your past to poison your future. And yeah. if there be other family members doing that, then he would use other family members to say, girl, you remember when he did this? Girl, remember when he said that? So, and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that advice, the same mom who was afraid for you to come to Alabama would say, hey, we don't need to know what's going on. When uh -huh. nobody knew what was, it seemed like to me, her advice would have been, you need to call and tell me everything so I can make sure, you know, my baby living. But she gave you the right advice, even though she didn't like the situation. Mm -hmm. Now she did call me three times a day for a full year. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you were still living. <laughs> uh, wow. And when I did call, she freaked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Do you think your mom have gotten past that five years later? Oh yeah. Yeah, she loved Jeremy to death. Five years later, do can you say honestly to yourself, I made the right decision? Uh-huh. Yeah. And so being that we as married couples, we have to everybody face obstacles, whether you interracial or not. You can be married to somebody of the same race and you still face difficulties. But is there a time where conversation is uncomfortable for you and Jeremy? In other words, if something happened, are y'all able say for instance with race, you know? Um, mm -hmm. is it uncomfortable for you all to talk about it? You know, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like sometimes I jokingly, if something mm -hmm. happens on the news, I may jokingly say to my husband, that's your people out there clowning. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they had a news thing on, uh, social media and I forget, I, I want to say it was Florida. I can't remember, but it was in some type of projects and you had over a hundred people outside during this COVID COVID pandemic and they was out gathering and the police was trying to tell them, hey, go back in. It's not safe. You need to practice social distancing. And when mm -hmm. I was looking at it, it really just broke my heart, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. Especially being that my dad is in the hospital and he's suffering from COVID and he's been in ICU for three weeks. So it was really heartbreaking. And so the way I've been able to get through with all that I'm going through with my dad is to add humor. You know, I stay busy and I add humor to it. And so even though when I saw it, it was heartbreaking because I'm like, man, they don't understand. This is a real virus that's doing real damage. But I was able to joke about it. And I told my husband, them, your people, look at your people out there. And they know they know better than that, mm -hmm. you know, jokingly. So mm -hmm. are y'all, how does that affect conversation when it comes to race, being in an interracial marriage? It doesn't at all. Loki, Jeremy, he may be white at, in the on the outside, but in the inside, <laughs> he's black. <laughs> Most of the people he hang around with is black. <laughs> yeah, he can jerk, jerk chicken better than uh, Jamaican. <laughs> yeah, and he actually talks, and, and I don't even know what that means. Talk African American, but. To me, when I, I heard him over the phone, he actually sounded African-American. Yeah. I actually didn't realize he was Caucasian until I actually saw him. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't want to use the terminology talk black because that ain't no such thing. But you know what I'm saying. He sounded like he had some so Yeah. <laughs> and so um, let me ask you this. When y'all go out in public, do you still get the stares when y'all go out in public? Oh, oh yeah. See you all in 2020. Still in 2020, like I remember one time that, um, hold on one second, let's pause. Okay, go ahead. So, do you still get stares in 2020 when y'all go out in public? Yes, yes, we do. And, um, I could go back to one time, you know, even though it's not 2020, mm -hmm. uh, when this happened, but you know, in 2020, we still get the stairs mm -hmm. but um i think it was 2015 or 16 
2015. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jeremy and I, we went out to Walmart and we were with his brother and we was just getting a whole lot of stares. And Jeremy's brother was like, uh, I can have my dick hanging out right now. No one would know this. Come here, <laughs> y'all. And we had another lady or um, uh, someone I went to school with that, Oakwood. Mm-hmm. She went up to me. She was like, are you okay? Because um, I had two, Jeremy and his brother, both white, and they're like bigger, taller. She thought I was in danger or something. <laughs> but I was like, no, this is my husband. Uh-huh. <laughs> so she and, felt like you were in danger. Yes. <laughs> she said, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so when you said to her, this is my husband, what was her reply? She was like, oh, Okay. Well, Mm -hmm. nice to meet you. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. It it just amazes me the things that we still have to overcome, the things that we still have to battle, even in 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, And marriage is hard enough on its own, but for people to add to that. um, Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Y'all have a beautiful son, Noah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have any concerns in regards to your child? Like, man, what difficulties will he face? growing up being biracial sometimes I do wonder that but I have to tell myself you know things are not the same as they were in the past Mm -hmm. so we're slowly moving forward to where everything is more accepting Mm -hmm. so maybe he's not gonna get any you know um what's the word called called um just be discriminated against you know i'm hoping and praying that doesn't happen yeah yeah i try to think that way yeah yeah and stay positive yeah Mm -hmm. i I totally agree with you um and it's so it would be so very good to instill that in him at home Mm -hmm. um you know it's a cruel world that we live in and we have to prepare our kids not for fantasy land but for the real world we have to have conversations with them. We have to introduce them to both races, not just the a Caucasian side or the African-American, or in your case, the Haitian side. Um, mm-hmm. We have to make our kids well-rounded, and we have to just keep having a conversation with them, having that healthy dialogue with our kids. So when they get out and they're confronted uh, with it in the world, they will know how to respond. Uh, you know, we have to have these real-life conversations uh, with mm-hmm. our kids, and uh, race will be one of those conversations that you have to have with your kids. Uh, even with my boys, you know, with the whole thing with the police, you know, um, just four or five years ago, I had to sit my boys down and have a conversation, you know, that if you're stopped by the police, and that was a conversation I didn't think I would have to have. Uh, yeah. In 2015, I sit my boys down, and um, right after I had that conversation, both of my boys were stopped. They were both profiled because they were black men and they were both stopped by the police. Uh, One of them was going to the washer and uh, they said he fitted the profile of somebody who had committed some crime. And 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 my son kept asking him, well, what was the profile? What did the guy look like? But they didn't have an answer. Uh, And then uh, my youngest son was profiled in the neighborhood. Uh, He was going to a friend's house and they told him he had no business in that neighborhood. Uh, and they actually uh, handcuffed uh, my oldest son on the ground, put him in handcuffs, searched his car and everything, and he had did anything wrong. But I thank God I had that conversation with them. You put your hands on your steering wheels. You say, yes, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, don't talk back. Don't get smart. Um, do whatever they ask you to do. Don't reach for nothing. Don't reach for no cell phone. Don't reach for anything. Uh, always look at the badge number. And, you know, just having this dialogue was, and I'm like, man, in 2015, I'm having to have this conversation. And in 2020, I'm still reminding them of that conversation. And yeah. my, my, my the point that I brought home to my boys, and the one thing that I keep telling them, and I have been telling them ever since the Trayvon Martin uh, incident happened, get back home. Whatever it takes for you to get back home, to your mm-hmm. wife, to your kids, get back home. It's not about being right or wrong in a situation. I need for you to make it back home. And whatever it's going to take for you to do to get back home, you do that. 
If you have to lay on the ground, whatever you have to do, you make sure you get back home. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I still have to have that conversation with them. And I'm sure you're going to have to have that conversation as well. And so before we end this, Gail, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say uh, to the women in the BW circle or to anybody who may be watching this YouTube video, what do you want them to know um, in regards to interracial marriage, interracial couples, anything you may want them to, any myth you may want to talk about, uh, any questions that you get tired of hearing, or just anything that you want to share that can shed light that uh, love is blind, and that Mm -hmm. you do have the right to love whoever you want to, no matter what the race is. Mm -hmm. Um, That race shouldn't even be a factor when love is in play. So yeah. any words that you want to share, I don't know what you want to share. It can be about anything, but whatever closing words that you want to leave with anybody that's watching, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that before I end the video. Well, there's no difference between, you know, white, black, you know, mm-hmm. any different races, mm-hmm. you know, as long as y'all have love for each other, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Thank you for those words. Uh, I often tell people, if someone was to cut us, we all going to bleed the same color. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I always tell people is that heaven don't have a a colored section. You know, (laughs) if you're trying to make it to heaven. Uh, Gail, it's funny because I remember my daughter asking me, this is probably when she was in high school. And, you know, my daughter went to predominantly uh, uh, Caucasian, where there was predominantly Caucasian students. Uh, probably 85% Caucasians and um, probably 10% African Americans and probably 5% of other races. And so I remember her asking me one day, mom, would you be mad if I dated somebody Caucasian? I said, no, I would not. If that's who you like and that's who you want to date, I will be upset if you date somebody who mistreats you. I don't care what color they is. As long as they can treat you right and love you, I have no problem with the skin color. Um, Mm. my only thing is their treatment of you, not the color of their skin, but their character. I'm more Mm. concerned about character than color. And that was my advice to her. Don't ever worry about color. Always worry about character because it's Mm. character that you're going to have to live with. Right. Yeah. That's a good advice. (laughs) (laughs) And so, Gail, it's been a pleasure talking to you and you just shedding some light on your world for a second. Uh, A lot of times, you know, people think that um, they just have their own opinions when it comes to interracial dating. And like you said, you still in 2020, you're still getting the stares, you're still getting that, having to deal with the stigmatism that has been put on interracial uh, marriages. But my hat come off to you, young lady, for your courage and your boldness to love no matter what the color is, to love no matter what mom says, and to love uh, regardless of what the world says, and to have the love that only Christ can have. Uh, What if God blessed us on our skin color? I don't think people think about that, you know. Um, So I I thank you for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. (laughs) You are so welcome, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Blessings to you, young lady. Blessings to you too.